A couple weeks ago, we had the gospel passage from Matthew where the Lord said, you know, what is the greatest commandment, he asked, and he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. And as I expounded on that passage a couple weeks ago, kind of try to point out that is our goal in life. That is our main purpose, is to love the Lord with our, our, our whole heart, our whole soul, our whole mind. And when we do this, we're going to have this fulfillment that we're longing for. We're going to have this happiness that we're longing for. Why? Well, because God created us in his image and in his likeness. And what does it mean to be like God? Well, God is a communion of love, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that communion of love. And so we are created to try to be part of that communion as well. And when we do this, we're going to be happy. We're going to have that happiness that we long for. Because that's what we want to be as well. We just want to be happy. Aristotle said this about happiness. Happiness is the meaning and purpose of life, the whole aim and end of human existence. St. Aquinas said this about happiness. He used the words joy. Man cannot live without joy. And St. Augustine had this to say about happiness. We all want to live happily. And the whole human race, there is no one who does not assent to this proposition, even before it is fully articulated. Aristotle also says about happiness that this is something that we can choose. We can choose to be happy. So often we say, well, I'm not happy because this person did this to me, or this happened, or this result, or whatever, and because of that, I can't be happy. But Aristotle says, no, we can be happy. We get to choose to be happy or not. But that choice is choosing God or not. Choosing God or not because God is love. God is life. God is everything. And do we choose him or not? There's no question about it that our world, especially the United States, is not necessarily a happy place all the time. Turn on the news. But not only the news, let's just look at some quick statistics here. In the last 20 years, depression has skyrocketed to unseen numbers. Substance abuse continues to go up. Suicide rates continue to go up. All these statistics showing that as a world, as a culture, as a country, we are not happy. Why? Well, we could also look at that and say, what have we done in the last 20 years? We've kind of taken God out of the picture a little bit, or a lot, we could say. It's interesting, by the way, that those, and this has been studies that have been done, those that have a relationship with God, those who consider themselves religious people, are three times happier than agnostics and atheists. So often we hear, you know, religious people, it it oppresses you. There's no freedom. You're not going to be happy. Let's, you know, let's live in the moment. Then you're going to be happy. Really, not the case. And why is that? Because we know that this only thing that's going to fulfill us is God. St. Augustine knew this. Augustine lived a life of debauchery. He He was a sinful man. He lived in worldly pleasures. It's all he sought out. But in his famous work, The Confessions, what is that? That famous line of his, right? Augustine states, My heart is restless until it rests in thee. Our hearts are restless until they rest in God. Because we are made in God's image and likeness, we're always going to be seeking him out. We go to our responsorial psalm today, right? Remember, this is David writing this. And David, talk about a a great king, but also someone who was a great sinner. But his psalms speak to the heart. What does it say? 
My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. He continues, O God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you, my flesh pines, and my soul thirsts like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. Thus have I gazed towards you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. And what does Jesus say the point is of our life? What is the great commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. When we do this, we're going to be happiness. We're going to be happy. Our soul is going to be filled. Filled with God's love. Filled with God's grace. And we are going to experience that love that we are longing for. This past week, I had the opportunity, all the priests at the Archdiocese did, uh, to go to a clergy study day. And it was put on by a Father Robert Spitzer. You may have heard of Father Spitzer before. He, is, uh, he was actually the president of Gonzaga University for 11 years. He's a Jesuit, but he's a well-known speaker and author. Uh, he's been on EW10. He's been on CNN. He actually argued against Stephen Hawkins for the existence of God. By the way, Father Spitzer won because God does exist, right? He actually kind of demolished uh, Hawkins, which is a great thing to see, right, in this existence of God. But Father Spitzer has dedicated the rest of his uh, life now uh, to, to trying to let people know about God, his happiness, his love. And he has, he's actually created something called the Four Levels of Happiness. So he gave a quick presentation on it uh, to us on Tuesday. I just want to share with you uh, the pyramid that he gave to us. It should be coming up there soon. By the way, in the past, I would write it out on a whiteboard, but you've all seen my handwriting before. It's not a good idea for me to write eight words down, right? So we have these four levels of happiness. And so we can, we can see about these four things, that it goes all the way from pleasure to the ultimate good. Well, what's level one? Level one is it's just that immediate pleasure, that we, we want pleasure, we want to avoid pain. What's an example uh, of this? Well, immediate pleasure might be, you know, eating a filet mignon. Let's say you had a filet mignon last night. It was probably delicious, right? Red and juicy and that, that perfect bite. When you ate into it, you go... Mmm, that is, oh, that is delicious, right? That's so good. And you finish the filet mignon and you go, what's next? And you can't eat filet mignon your whole life. You can't eat ice cream your whole life. If you try to, it's going to be a very short life, right? It can't just be seeking out pleasure or the avoidance of pain because all that brings is that immediate reaction which does not bring any fulfillment at all. It's not just about food that this happens. This happens as well when it comes to any sort of addiction as well. Addiction to alcohol, addiction to drugs, addiction to, to anything else, right? The internet, and even playing a, a game of solitaire on your computer to try to get that immediate win. And then you go, great, what's next, right? It's that it's that immediate reaction which does not truly bring any happiness. It actually puts into us a greater, a greater addiction or caving into that immediate uh, gratification. So we can all see, number one, everyone can at least acknowledge that's not what we're called to live for. Level two is an interesting level of happiness. This one he calls the uh, achievement uh, level. But actually it's more egocentric as, as well. And by the way, 71% of the United States adults identify as dominant level two. So what is level two? It's all about that achievement. It's all about, you know, am I, am I better than this other person? Am I acknowledged for how good I am? Am I, uh, am I viewed in high esteem? Or even our mind, we go, oh, I'm better looking than that person. Or I'm more athletic than that person. For me, sometimes, oh, I birdied that hole and you didn't birdie that hole type of thing, 
right? This is level two. This is most prevalent, by the way, we could say, especially now, as Father Spitzer said, in millennials and, and, and college-age students, high school-age students, and youth as well. What's came out in the last 20 years? Social media. And what has this done? It has absolutely destroyed all our culture. It, it has. What is it all about now? It's all about getting the likes on Facebook or Instagram, right? We post a picture. Let's use an example. You know, grandma posts a picture of her, her grandchild, and the, and the grandchild is eating some baby formula and, and spits that out. And it's so cute, right? I have to post this on Instagram so everyone can see this. And yet Susie in Tennessee, my, my good friend, kind of, my good friend doesn't hit the like button. Well, what's wrong with, what's wrong with Susie? She doesn't, she doesn't like me. And so then Susie posts a picture of her grandchild. And this time, instead of spitting baby formula, that the child says the first word, and the word is grandma, right? And you go, well, I'm not liking that. She didn't like my picture. I know this sounds ridiculous, and it's meant to sound ridiculous, but this is what happens. This is what happens in level two. It's all about being comparative. It's all about me, me, me. And then that short-term pleasure. Or if Susie does hit the like button on my, on my cute grandchild, well, then we get that good feeling inside. But then five minutes later, I go, what's the next picture that I can post? Where else does this happen? It happens in the business world. Am I, am I getting the promotion that I deserve? Am I getting the recognition that I deserve? You become the CEO, but even then, when you're not the CEO anymore, then what? We have this empty feeling. I've been striving for this win, 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 win all my life. And it gets taken away, and then it leads to what? This emptiness. This emptiness which we are experiencing as a culture. We're not experiencing this happiness. And it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating because we're so hooked into this world, so hooked into only thinking about ourself or this world only. That's where level three comes in. We realize this. So level three is this big change. Instead of just me, now we want to give this contribution. We want to make the world a better place. And this is good. This is a good change. And so what we do, we, we try to help out the common good. We try to make the world a better place. We do good beyond ourself. And when this happens, we have this, this long-term happiness. But even then, it's not enough. Why? Because this world, it's not the end. This world is made up of human beings. And we are going to fail each other over and over and over again. We are not perfect. And so we're going to be disappointed in someone or some organization or whatever it may be, even the church in itself. This can happen. And so what we must do is get to this level four type of happiness, which Father Spitzer talked about. This level four, which is this ultimate good. And that means having a relationship with God in which we are able to contribute, but also receive as well. When we receive God's grace, when we receive that love that we are longing for, that only our Abba, our Father in heaven can give us, we are going to experience that peace that we are longing for as a society and so we dive into that relationship with God. And we say, Lord, I need you. I love you. Give me everything that you have. And we live in that love. And from that love, from that contemplation, we'll be able to lead to better action. We'll be able to go against the culture. Does this mean we're not going to fall into level two again? <laughs> yeah, right. We're going to fall into level two again. But when we do, we can at least say to ourselves, hey, stupid. This is me talking to myself, by the way. Right? I can call myself stupid, right? Hey, stupid, what are you doing? Who cares they didn't say it was a good homily? You did your best. 
right? Or if it was level two, it would be, no one said it was a good homily. And then you, what happens? You get down on yourself. How do you do that in your life? How do we realize, you know what? I have God and he has me. And that's all that we care for. That's all that we long for. That's all that we thirst for. Jesus had it right. What is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. And when you do this, when we do this, we're going to have this happiness. Why? Because God has us, and we have God.